Hello students, so in continuation with our discussion about the Coriolis force and deriving the Coriolis force components, we have considered this geometry as shown in this figure. So, the object or the air parcel that we have considered is having its velocity in the zonal direction that is it is moving from let us say from west to east. The object is slightly displaced in the meridional direction causing it to change from r to r plus delta r. So, as you see r capital R is the distance of the object to the axis of rotation, but not to the center of the earth. The radius of the earth is given as small a, small a is the radius, radius of earth right. So, now the object is displaced such that its value changes from r to r plus delta r. So, here in the picture it may not appear that r is changing from r plus delta r rather it appears to be r minus delta r, but we can keep a provision that delta r can be positive or negative. So, in any way, so at this point uh, the as the object is moved from uh, r to r plus delta r something that we have seen so far is that its uh, velocity of course, the zonal velocity has to change because it is the only component of velocity that we have involved in the in the discussion so far. So, here so it is very important that uh, we keep a track of uh, so this is the angular momentum of the object uh, of the object yes and when it is combined with the angular velocity you have omega combined with the angular velocity of the earth fine. Now, as the uh, radius uh, as the distance to the axis of rotation changes by some magnitude. Since we have involved only uh, with omega you have involved only u. So, it is, it is purely zonal motion. So, the object is executing purely zonal motion. It is not moving in any other direction. So, this purely zonal motion has to change by a small magnitude delta u. And in addition from this from this geometry what you will also be able to realize is that the latitude changes from phi to phi plus delta phi. This is a very important uh, concept. So, for the ease of calculations we can say that the delta phi the change in the, the incremental change in the angle can be a very small angle. So, in continuation so what we can do is so what we have done so far is derive an expression for delta u. So, which is minus 2 omega delta r minus delta r u by r fine. So, from this geometry we can write that r is equals to a cos phi simply r is equals to a cos phi yes or phi or phi naught. So, it is the same thing. So, delta r can be a times minus sin phi delta phi plus cos phi delta a. Now, the very important thing is that uh, so as the object is displaced, so delta phi change in the angle is it 0 or non 0. So, what you can say is the angle is changing from phi to delta phi. So, there is a non 0 change. So, there is this derivative this differential cannot be 0 and rather delta a as the object is still on the surface on the surface of the earth. So, this the distance to the center is the radius of the earth. So, at both the times let us say at time 1 and at time 2 the object is still on the surface. So, delta a can be treated as 0. So, if you do that, so what you will realize is that delta r becomes now a times minus sin phi times delta phi right. Now, this we can using this using this in equation c what is this equation c? Equation c is the expression for delta u. So, you can use this. So, delta u can now be written as minus 2 omega times minus delta y sin phi minus minus delta y sin phi divided by r u. Okay, I forgot to tell you how come we how did we get delta y in the picture. So, so using uh, this small angle, so this is the this is the displacement. So delta y, what is delta y? I have written in this figure. Delta y is the meridional 
displacement. So, if the force has done anything, it has displaced the air parcel by a magnitude of delta y. So, using the simple trigonometry, we can write that sine of delta phi is equals to delta y by a. That means, delta y is equals to a delta phi provided the angle delta phi is very, very small. Okay. So, you, so I have used this into this uh, expression. So, which we can write as delta u is equals to. So, now delta u the change in the velocity is simply 2 omega delta y sin phi plus u by a delta y sin phi by cos phi r is equal to a sin phi a cos phi. So, delta u becomes 2 omega delta y sin phi plus u by a delta y tan phi. Now, dividing this expression, dividing this expression by delta t. Let us say this, ex this expression is equation number d. So, delta u by delta t is equals to 2 omega delta y by delta t into sin phi plus u by a delta y by delta t into tan phi. So, this change delta r is now expressed in terms of delta y actually that is what I see here right. So, if I say now the, 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 the equation is in the deltas now. So, which taking the time limit let us say when delta t tending to 0 we can write we can write that du by dt is equals to 2 omega dy by dt into sin phi plus u by a dy by dt into tan phi. So, u is the velocity which is equivalent to dx by dt, v is the velocity which is equivalent to dy by dt, w is the velocity which is equivalent to dz by dt. So, in the coordinate system that we have taken, if you see the earth laterally, so displacement, so this, this coordinate system is like this. So, this is the x direction which is analogous to longitudes, the y direction is analogous to latitudes the z direction which is vertically upwards is analogous to altitude and z. So, the object is having zonal velocity. So, the object is traveling across x axis x direction. Now, the displacement was in the y direction or in the latitudes. So, it has now resulted in a component of velocity which is can be written as v. Right. So, d u by d t is equals to 2 omega v sin phi plus u v by a tan phi. Right. This let us call this equation as, so if we have used d, this equation can be called as equation e. Now, what is, what is that we have obtained? So, where did we start? We started from uh, having the angular velocity of earth given by capital omega and the angular velocity of the object by the virtue of its linear velocity u in the zonal direction zonal is and the radius and the distance to the axis of rotation. Due to these two things we have written the angular velocity of the air parcel as omega. Since the object has a velocity with respect to the earth this two velocities gets added up. So, so this is the basic uh, construct that we have done. I mean the basic uh, 
uh, the beginning the is like this. Now, you displace this object meridionally. So, what happens is if you displace the object meridionally towards the equator, then the distance of this object the axis of rotation will increase let us say right will increase. So, that, that means r will go from r to r plus delta r. So, meridional displacement by the application of a force has resulted in the velocity to change to u plus delta u fine. Now, what you realize is that meridional displacement has resulted in zonal acceleration. So, you see the, the displacement was in the meridional direction by changing the value of r right, but now what you see is acceleration. So, this is acceleration, acceleration which direction is this acceleration in is in the zonal acceleration. So, in conclusion what you can say is that meridional displacement leads to zonal acceleration. So, in conclusion of this picture uh, you see meridional displacement leads to leads to zonal acceleration right. So, what is particular about it? I mean if you if you displace an object like this the object will accelerate in this direction as simple as that ok. Now, anything else to it? I mean let us say we have now we have two very important terms d u by d t let us say 2 omega v sin phi plus u v by a tan phi. So, this is uh, what, what are the physical dimensions of this, this equation. So, this is the rate of change of velocity which is the acceleration. So, for per unit mass the quantity is on the right hand side let us say per unit mass the quantity is on the right hand side should be equal to f by m right. So, that means that these quantities will have the dimensions of force per unit mass. For example, this 2 omega v sin phi is generally referred to as the Coriolis term. This term is referred to as Coriolis term. Now, there are many different possibilities of this I mean moving the object. That means, you can displace it meridionally then you will see uh, you can see what are the effects of uh, changes changes in the meridional displacement. Let us say if you displace it meridionally or you can displace it zonally. Let us say if the object is having a velocity component in the y direction and if you displace it in the x direction, you can you may want to see what will be the effect of this particular displacement. Then you will write an equation of motion like this. Right, so many things can uh, can be worked out. That means that uh, so in different possibilities, you will always realize that the acceleration uh, will let's say will 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 sometimes will contain two terms. This is this the first term is called as the Coriolis term, and the second term is called as the curvature term. Curvature term. Now let's say to in order to understand this more uh, rigorously, let's consider the displacement of an object in the vertical direction. So, let us say the object to begin with is in the same uh, frame of reference that is it is moving with respect to the earth uh, at a velocity u. Now, let us say if in this picture what we will do is we will take the object let us say so the object is at this distance. So, at this with respect to the axis of rotation it is at a distance r and with respect to the center of the earth it is at a distance a. Now, the object is displaced vertically up. So, this is now when the object is displaced vertically upwards let us say. So, this will go like this. So, this is this is r naught and let us say this is r plus delta r. So, this r also changing here right and the displacement is by a magnitude delta z. So, that means now the parcel the parcel or the object that we have taken after the displacement it is now the the center the the distance to the center of the earth is now changing by a plus delta z ok. Now, if so if you look in the uh, if you look it look at it in a 
two dimensional picture it may appear so but what you will realize if you uh, if you ch so the r is also changing from r plus delta r now what you will realize so this is the, at the same angle so the angle or the latitude the angle this point subtends at the center of the earth with respect to the equator will not change so phi will remain phi so here in the earlier case what we have seen is that phi changes uh, in the earlier case what we have seen is that in this case r of course is changing u is changing and uh, phi the angle is also changing but here a is not changing a remains the same a is the distance to the center of the earth a is not changing but in this picture what you will realize is that uh, the value of value to the center of the earth is changing by a small distance delta z and the angle phi will remain a constant okay now in this picture we can start directly from the even if you so here or the, the angular momentum equation let's say the angular momentum does not depend on a of course it does not depend on a but it does depend on r right so that means that if you work out the same angular momentum conservation you will realize that you will get the same value of delta u delta u will now be written as minus 2 omega delta r minus u delta r by r right now so in this uh, in this way so r is equals to so here r is again a cos phi so dr or delta r is a times minus sin phi delta phi plus cos phi times delta a right so here so delta phi is 0 in this picture so delta r can simply be written as delta del, can simply be written as delta z times cos phi so delta so the change in the value of a is delta z right so we can substitute this into let's call this equation as a now and let's say this equation is b we can use b in equation a and we can rewrite that delta u is equals to minus 2 omega delta z cos phi minus u delta z cos phi divided by r now r is equals to a cos phi using that delta u is equals to uh, or uh, yeah minus 2 omega delta z cos phi minus u delta z by a right now dividing by delta t now, if you divide with delta t you will get delta u by delta t is equals to minus 2 omega delta z by delta t into cos phi minus u delta z by delta t into to 1 by a when delta t tends to 0 you can write du by dt is equals to minus 2 omega w cos phi minus u w by a right so when uh, so here d z by dt is w there is nothing uh, new about it so finally we have got another equation similar to the earlier equation let us say we, we call this equation as we call this equation as c so what does it mean it means that we have now we have got so for an object having its velocity in the zonal direction so zonal direction is the is the object of object's velocity so spare that particular direction you have two other directions v and w right so v is the meridional direction and w is the vertical direction right so if the object having zonal velocity having only zonal velocity is displaced in the meridional direction or in the vertical direction we have seen both the cases we will realize that the both the cases will will lead to acceleration in the zonal direction so just like 
we have equation E in the last picture, we have this equation again representing both the uh, cases where it is leading towards the zonal acceleration, right. So, that means let us rewrite these two equations for, for, for understanding more details about them. Let us say, let us say d u by d t is equals to 2 omega v sin phi plus u v by a tan phi and d u by d t is equals to minus 2 omega w 2 omega cos phi minus u w by a right. So, what are these two equations? Both the equations are zonal acceleration and this is this is both the equations have zonal acceleration on the right hand side you have force per unit mass ok. Now, no matter so, so now let us say the other possibilities could be let us consider a object which is moving in the vertical direction and let us displace it in the horizontal direction or in the zonal direction or let us displace it in the uh, vertical direction or the other possibility could be let us consider an object which is moving in the in the vertical direction then displace it in the zonal and meridional direction. So, there th this could be many uh, possibilities. So, what you realize is that if the object's original velocity is in this direction, if you displace it in this direction or let us say this vertical direction, both of them will re will result in accelerating in the same direction. This is, this is a very important aspect of it. So, in conclusion what you can say is that the first part this these terms, these terms are referred to as Coriolis terms and these terms are referred to as the metric terms, metric terms or curvature terms. They arise because of the curvature of the earth, curvature terms. Now, we can extrapolate this argument saying that the object is having its original velocity in a particular direction and then you can uh, apply external force and displace it in a, in a certain direction that you want. And then you can also uh, get these expressions, get the expression similar to this and then we can make a generalized description of the Coriolis force, ok. So, this is the basic, so what is the, what is the origin of all this uh, acceleration? The, the origin of uh, this acceleration is basically the conservation of angular momentum and what is the need for conserving the angular momentum because you are changing the distance with respect to uh, the axis of the rotation, right. So, what is the need if you talk uh, for you to talk about angular momentum conservation is that because the object which you are uh, you are thinking to be moving or to be at rest uh, with respect to a stationary frame of reference because in in atmospheric physics we always use what is called as the geocentric reference frame that means a frame of reference that is fixed with respect to the earth but then things get complicated because the earth itself is not at rest rather it is moving so the in order to if you want to describe the e a certain objects uh, motion, then you take into account, you describe it as it is and then you take into the effect of the frame of reference which is moving. So, then you will realize that you will need additional force components which you call as apparent forces, right. So, so just to comprehend all these things, what we have done is we have taken the object to be moving in a particular direction, we conserved this angular momentum and after conserving the angular momentum, we realize that the meridional displacement or the vertical displacement whatever it is will result in zonal acceleration not in the meridional way or in the. But one more very important thing is that you see uh, you see that the displacement that you, are, you, have calc you have done is resulting of course in a velocity across the same direction and let us say in this, but the effectively the acceleration is in the in the zonal direction ok. So, this is where we stop. So, in the next class we will try to uh, supplement these two equations with few more components of the Coriolis force and then we try to make a generalized description of the Coriolis force and the effect of Coriolis force on the wind movement along in the different hemispheres and in different directions ok. Yeah, thank you.